YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with yet another Washington football team video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here to talk about a couple players who I feel as though are underrated headed into the 2021 season. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL or in this case, our Washington football team. We're so close to 3,000 subscribers. I know we can get there in no time with you guys' support. So hit that big red subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get straight into today's video. So the first person on my list who I feel as though is underrated is none other than wide receiver Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin has never had consistent QB play and he's been in the league for two years and he's already had five quarterbacks. Now assuming that Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to win the starting gig, he's going to have his sixth quarterback in three years and Terry McLaurin has still been able to put up some decent numbers under those conditions. I mean his rookie year he's put up almost a thousand yards having 919 yards and seven touchdowns and then he doubled back in his second year putting up 1100 yards and four touchdowns. Now all having different quarterbacks each and every week. I mean, Terry McLaurin, could you just imagine being him preparing each and every week, not knowing who's going to throw you the ball while you have guys like DK Metcalf out here had, knowing that they're going to have Russell Wilson, guys like Devontae Adams knowing that they're going to have Aaron Rodgers and stuff like that, so on and so forth. So Terry McLaurin's out here competing with guys like that and still putting up solid numbers while having guys like Dwayne Haskins, Case Keenum, T um, Taylor Heineke, uh, injured um, Alex Smith, and uh, injured Kyle Allen so just knowing that he's able to put up numbers like this I can only imagine what he can do when he gets consistent QB play I just need Ryan Fitzpatrick or Terry Heineke to be there all 17 games and I guarantee you Terry McLaurin is going to put up at least 1500 yards and probably double digit touchdowns Terry McLaurin's potential is out the roof and his talent is there Terry McLaurin is just so phenomenal and once he gets that consistent QB play which I highly doubt he will this year because you know Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to have his Ryan Fitz tragic moment and then you're going to know you know Taylor Heineke is barely even getting this shot now so we don't know what Taylor Heineke is so knowing that he might not have consistent QB play this year also is just frustrating but hoping that he does and once he does his his stats are going to go up and he's going to finally get the recognition that he so rightfully deserves I'm telling you he deserves to be in the in the conversation with the DK Metcalf and everyone else who they like to put over Terry McLaurin because Terry McLaurin is a top 10 top 15 wide receiver in this league and he's going to put on a show this year if he can get somewhat of constant QB play. So moving on to the next player on my list is Montez Sweat. You got to expect this. Montez Sweat is a very underrated player because of obviously who's on the other side of him. Chase Young, while he's getting all the attention and all the, you know, glory, Montez Sweat is on the other side, you know, not really getting the recognition. Now he's starting to get somewhat of the recognition, but nowhere near as Chase Young. Montez Sweat is very dominant, and he put it on display last year having phenomenal games, such as the Pittsburgh Steelers games and the Dallas Cowboys games. I mean, he was phenomenal all year, you know, getting back there creating pressure on the quarterback being a, being effective in the run game as far as stopping the run and also batting up passes causing you know deflections and interceptions so with Mont with Montez Sweat not getting the recognition that he so rightfully deserves us Washington fans knows how dominant he is but for the whole NFL they're sleeping on Montez Sweat, and Montez Sweat could very well go on any other 31 of these NFL teams and be a starting defensive end. That's how dominant Montez Sweat is, but since he's on the other side of Chase Young, he's not getting the recognition that I personally think he deserves, but that could all change this year with the dominance of Chase Young and Montez Sweat, and also with getting Matt Ioannidis back. That's going to also help out those guys on the outside, so Montez Sweat is very, very underrated in my opinion. Now, moving on to the next player on my list is Lion linebacker Cole Holcomb. Cole Holcomb is very underrated. Since getting drafted by Washington in 2019 in the fifth round and when he finally got his chance to be a starter he has not looked back. The guy was phenomenal last year and in 2019 he showed some flashes. Before getting hurt in 2020 the guy was probably our best linebacker. I mean you know remember the game where he killed Ezekiel Elliott. I mean the guy's just always on the field making plays making tackles and he isn't that bad in pass coverage either. So just imagine with him Jamin Davis and Kaliki Hudson could do. 
if Kaliki Hudson gets his shot. You know what I'm saying? So Cole Holcomb is the leader of this linebacker core, in my opinion. He's the best one we got, at least for right now, and the dude is a dog. I really would love to see him play I mean, get some shine at middle linebacker, Sam linebacker, and even weak side. He can play all three linebacker positions. That's really what's good about Cole Holcomb. And he, you know he's a guy that's going to go in there and just give you his all each and every week. I love Cole Holcomb, and he's very, very underrated, and I can see him having a big season and putting the NFL on notice. Next player on my list is Sadiq Charles. Sadiq Charles, in my opinion, is very underrated considering the fact that we've got Eric Flowers back and the dominance of Wes Schweitzer. A lot of people are counting him out of this um, position race, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people forget, since it's been a lot of talks of him playing guard, a lot of people forget that we drafted him to be a left tackle in the fourth round of the 2020 draft, so don't even count him out of the left tackle conversation. I know we want to assume that Cornelius Lucas or Charles Leno have it on lock or even Samuel Cosme, but he's still in this race. Sadiq Charles is very much in this race. He can play left tackle. He can play left guard, and I wouldn't even be surprised if we give him some shine at right guard in training camp to see what he can do in preseason, but Sadiq Charles should be getting some recognition because I feel like he's very, very underrated, and if he wasn't hurt, I'm pretty sure we would have known how good he is because the talent is there. The health is just a concern. Moving on to my last player, like I said, this is just a short little list because I don't want to put everybody on this because everyone isn't underrated. The next person on my list is DeShazer Everett. And you guys know I love Shays, man. And I really do think Shays has a good opportunity to be either our free safety or strong safety, but more specifically our starting free safety because I feel like Cameron Curl should have strong safety on lock, but you don't never know considering the fact that Landon Collins is back. You guys know how I feel about Landon, so I'm not even going to get into that. But DeShazer Everett, free safety um, slash strong safety, I really do think that DeShazer Everett is very underrated. A lot of people are counting him out of this free safety race since we have Bobby McClain, since we have Derek Forrest, and we obviously have guys like Jeremy Reeves, and um, did I say Bobby McClain? I feel like I said Bobby McClain already, but we have guys like him on this roster, so a lot of people are counting out DeShazer Everett out of the safety race, but I would not do that. I Like I told you guys in um, countless times before, it, us upgrading the free safety position was no problem, but I personally felt like if we didn't upgrade it, I would be totally fine with it because we have guys like DeShazer who I personally feel like can go out there and be free safety. Now, a lot of you guys may beg to differ, but Shays was dominant last year before he got hurt. Him and Cameron Curl had that chemistry going before he went down, and like I, like I said, DeShazer was really never given his opportunity. He was always just a special teams guy, but since he got his opportunity last year, he's never looked back, but once again, just like the last person I named, health concerns are really the thing that holds back DeShazer ever, so if he can stay healthy, I would not be surprised if he becomes our starting free safety. Now, moving on to our honorable mentions, I want to say Cameron Curl is number one on our honorable mentions for some people who feel like he's underrated. I personally don't think he's underrated. I feel like the NFL really knows who Cameron Curl is because he put on a clinic last year, and I still don't want to say he's underrated because he he came into the league as a seventh round pick, so I feel like Cam Curl is rated right where he should be. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I do think he's getting a little old, un, um, undershadowed by Jeremy Chen. I think he's better than Jeremy Chen in my opinion, so I would see why you guys would make a point for Cam Curl being underrated, but I personally don't think he is. I mean, obviously, we know how good Cam Curl is. So the next person on my list is a little bit uh, iffy, too. Honorable mentions um, is Matt Ioannidis and Tim Settle. Matt Ioannidis and Tim Settle, we know how dominant these guys are, so that's the reason why I didn't put them on the list, but I mean, if you guys put them on the list as underrated, I will understand why, because we have Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne starting, and not only that, Matt Ioannidis was hurt all last year, so I would totally understand if you guys feel as though these guys are underrated, but I feel like they're just rated where they should be, and we know how dominant they are, and we know how dominant they can be. So that's the reason why I felt like they didn't make this list. Um, and it's no shame to not make this list because if you're not on this list, you're rated right where you're supposed to be, or you're even better than what we expect you to be. So yeah, man, I just want to come over here quickly to talk about some guys that I feel like are underrated. Who do you personally think down below is underrated? Put it in the comment section because, like I said, I know I didn't name everyone, so put it down below. I'll be reading every comment, and always it's me, boy one. Gotti, like, comment, subscribe. Hello to watch the football team. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers. We're almost there. So hit that big red subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm out. Peace. Oh, cross me one time. That's gonna get you pop. Get you pop. Man.